Last night I noticed that my Cummins lost Prime, which means that it's a good time for me to install some goodies that I got for a really good deal on Black Friday. I got this high volume, low pressure lift pump kit, which includes the pump, spacer, two gaskets, two ceiling rings, and then a supply line that goes from the lift pump or the transfer pump over to the injection pump. And then I also got this, which is a brass tip fuel shutoff solenoid plunger. The first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and install the new lift pump kit. And in order to do that, in order to do that, I'm gonna have to dig around under here and get the old diaphragm style lift pump out of there. So I'm gonna have to disconnect the so I'm gonna have to disconnect the supply line to the lift pump, the line from the lift pump to the injection pump, and I'm gonna have to remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it to the block, scrape the gasket without getting anything into the crankcase. And then I'm also gonna have to cut a little bit of the insulation that's in the area above the pump just to make room for the new fuel line. Ugh. Next I need to go ahead and pull out this banjo bolt right here that feeds the uh, fuel filter and then the injection pump and whatnot. So there's that line. I need to save this banjo bolt. There's two little locking tangs right about there at my fingertips. And I just squeeze those on either side and then push the whole line this way. I'll try to capture it on film. So before I loosen these 10 millimeters and pull the pump off the side of the block, I'm just going to wipe around with a rag a little bit to avoid getting big chunks of grime down into the crankcase. Alrighty, got it cleaned up just a little bit. It required a little persuasion to get it off, but I just smacked it a couple times with a mallet and it popped right off the side there. Now I need to go ahead and pull this fitting and then install it on the new pump. Next, I need to scrape that nasty mating surface clean. So got that all scraped and polished up real nice. So the order of operations is gonna be a gasket, followed by the spacer, followed by another gasket, and then I'm just gonna be reusing the bolts that were in there. And that's how the stack is gonna look. 18 foot-pounds is the torque spec for these two bolts. Another thing I did is I put just a little bit of heavy gear oil on the plunger where it contacts the lobe. All right, now that I got both sides started, I'm just going to alternate turning them to get it to seat squarely. Part of the supply line there was chafing on that brake line, so I put a little isolating piece of rubber around it. Now that the pump is installed, I can see exactly where I need to cut insulation out. So as it turns out, I actually had to clearance the insulation in two places. I had to cut a big chunk of it out there for the end fitting. And then I also had to cut a decent chunk out there for a bend that's in the line. There was some other guys that I saw on YouTube talking about this and they said that they had to bend their lines and stuff, but I don't think that's the way to do it. I think the best way to do it is to cut out this additional little piece of insulation and then it looks like it bolts right in. So I've got my new seals for the banjo bolt and the way that this goes together, got my banjo bolt cleaned up, one new seal goes on, banjo bolt goes through the fitting, and then the other seal goes right here, just like that. This banjo bolt gets torqued to 18 foot-pounds, and I couldn't find a torque for this side, which makes sense because it's kind of a compression fitting. So there it is, all installed, but I'm not gonna torque it yet because I'm going to have to prime the system after I'm done with everything. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove the fuel shutoff solenoid. In order to do that, I'm just gonna pull those two wires off the top of it there and then unscrew the body of it, which is a 15 16 So I got the wires and the terminal pulled off and it's pretty grimy back there, so I'm gonna make sure I wipe everything off real good before I pull the FSS out 
Otherwise, I might get some grime down into the fuel pump. All right, so there's the fuel shutoff solenoid there. So this is the old plunger that I'm replacing, and you can see that it has kind of a rubberized pintle. And this is what, you know, some guys will say breaks down over time and then clog up the pump. And for that reason, I went ahead and got this brass one. Other than the KDP, this is the only other common ticking time bomb type item that first gen guys really ever talk about. So I've already done the KDP and uh, I can go ahead and link that video somewhere. If you're interested in watching that, you need to make sure that everything's super clean and then go ahead and put all this back together. There's the new plunger and spring installed. So I searched and I couldn't find the torque spec for this guy, but I definitely was able to feel its seat and then I turned it just a little bit more than that. I need to go ahead and put the terminal and the nut back on and then I can reinstall the electrical connectors. So one thing I noticed as I was reconnecting these, they are kind of loose on the terminal spades. You know, sometimes you'll get fueling problems with loose connectors, so I went ahead and pinched both of them down. That's all buttoned up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bleed the system to get it primed. And to do that, the new pump, I actually like its priming mechanism. It's this little uh, accordion looking piece right here. And all I have to do is just press on that to prime it. The old lift pumps priming mechanism is actually kind of annoying. You press down on this lever. Unless this is on the bigger end of the fuel pump lobe on the camshaft, then when I press down on this, nothing happens. But it seems like the new pump with that accordion uh, lawnmower primer looking thing, you can just press on that a few times no matter where it is. And then I'll see fuel spurt out of here. I'll go ahead and tighten that down to 18 foot pounds like I was talking about. And then I'll go ahead and loosen the injectors three at a time, crank it a few times, make sure I get fuel to the injectors and that my nonsense that I did to the pump is uh, working properly. And then after that, hopefully I can tighten up the lines and then take it for a test drive. I got my battery charged up. Don't mind that, I'm gonna fix it soon. I promise, said every Dodge guy ever. So I got that fuel line torqued down and I think I'm gonna try and start it as is. I have a feeling that it probably won't work, but I'm gonna give it a shot and then if it doesn't start within a couple cranks, then I'll go ahead and bleed to the injectors like I was talking about. No dice, so I'm gonna go ahead and bleed the injectors. I'll loosen the front three, crank it, and then tighten those, then loosen the back three, crank it, and then tighten those, and then hopefully it'll run. All right, so I bled out the injectors three at a time until I saw fuel coming out, and now I got them all tightened back down with my uh, crow's foot there on the end of my torque wrench. The torque spec is 22 foot-pounds according to the internet. Not quite enough juice. I'm gonna throw the trickle charger back on it for a minute.